Hello everyone. Today we will continue to explore the content of HCI Cloud Computing, AWI. Next, we will continue to help you understand the overall characteristics of our virtualization. Here we mainly discuss four aspects, partitioning, isolation, encapsulation, and relative hardware independence. Let's look at them one by one, starting with partitioning. What does partitioning mean in our virtualization? It means that our virtualization layer Ah, will allocate server resources to multiple virtual machines. Each virtual machine can run a separate operating system simultaneously. Of course, these can be the same or different. So we can run multiple applications on a single server. Each operating system can only see the virtual hardware provided by the virtualization layer, including our A CPU, memory, network card, hard drive, etc. Ah, firstly, it believes it is running on a dedicated server. So, regarding this partitioning part here, what is it actually equivalent to? It's equivalent to a physical server being like a comprehensive building. And the virtualization layer is like the building's administrator. The administrator can divide the building into multiple independent small rooms, and each small room is essentially a virtual machine. Each virtual machine can run a separate operating system simultaneously. Ah, the tokens can be the same or different. As for the operating system, in fact, this is all you need. The image version. As long as it is a CPU architecture version, ye supported by our physical machine, can be installed normally. Here, for example, on this physical server, some virtual machines are running operating systems used for office work, such as Windows. Right? Employees can perform document processing, spreadsheet creation, and other operations on it. Some systems are specifically dedicated to running server-side operating systems, like Linux, to support back-end operations of websites or tasks such as database management. Moreover, for each system suite, we can actually only see the virtual hardware provided by the virtualization layer. This includes virtual network cards, virtual CPUs, and virtual memory. It will think it is running on its own dedicated server. This is similar to how each person in a small room would feel like they own an independent small house. They are unaware that they are actually in a partition within a large building. Through partitioning, we can run multiple applications on a single server, which significantly enhances the utilization of our server resources and avoids idle and wasted resources. This is the first characteristic of our partitioning. Ah, it allows multiple virtual machines with the same or different systems to run on a single server. This is our first partition. Secondly, let's look at isolation. What does isolation mean? See how it, simply put, it means that virtual machines are isolated from each other. It, a crash or failure of one virtual machine, such as an operating system, failure, application crash, or driver failure, will not affect other virtual machines on the same server. Furthermore, a virus, a worm within one virtual machine, these are also isolated from other virtual machines, just as if each virtual machine were located on a separate physical server, so they do not affect each other. Thirdly, resource control can be implemented. To provide performance isolation, we can specify the minimum and maximum resource usage for each virtual machine to ensure that no virtual machine monopolizes resources. All the resources leaving other resources in the same system unavailable, nor will it leave other virtual machines without available resources. The fourth point is that multiple workloads, uh, applications, or operating systems can run simultaneously on a single machine. This avoids the limitation of the traditional x86 server architecture that we just discussed. The mentioned issue, such as application conflicts or DLL file conflicts, etc. This is a characteristic of our isolation. Uh, regarding this isolation, actually, the main purpose is to prevent, for example, after a virtual machine crashes or fails, it affects other virtual machines. Ah, uh, for example, this is like a small room in our building catching fire. One room catches fire. But because the rooms are isolated from each other, it generally won't affect other rooms. Or, taking a company's server as an example, if a service on one virtual machine crashes, it won't affect the services on other virtual machines running on the same server. It ensures that we maintain the continuity of other business operations. Ah, on the other hand, there's the issue of viruses, 
worms, trojans, and other malicious programs, which can have a significant impact on our, our computers. If one ha machine encounters a problem, why, there's no need to worry, as it won't affect other virtual machines. Ah, it's as if ye each one is located on a separate physical server, which greatly enhances the security of our system and prevents damage from malicious programs. Well, this is one of our isolation features, which ensures that our computers, or more accurately, the virtual machines, are isolated from each other, not affecting or interfering with one another. This is the characteristic of our isolation. The third is encapsulation. Encapsulation means that we store the entire virtual machine, including hardware configuration, BIOS settings, memory state, hard disk state, CPU state, etc. in a small set of files independent of the physical hardware. In this way, we only need to copy a few files to replicate, save, or move our virtual machines anytime and anywhere. Ah, because our virtual machine is actually based on our hardware, right? It's built on our physical hardware. The specific data inside it is nothing more than the data on the hard disk, right? And then there are some other hardware configurations. And if you have taken a snapshot of your virtual machine, if it's a powered on snapshot, there might also be some information in the memory. This information is basically all the data of a virtual machine. You could say it's all of its data. If you need to move or copy a virtual machine, you just copy these files directly. Ah, just copy the files and paste them elsewhere and you can use them directly. Uh, it's relatively very convenient to migrate. When packaging, if you need to migrate, we can directly package multiple files at the same time. You create a compressed file, and then we transfer everything together. This way, firstly, it's more convenient to transfer, and secondly, a virtual machine consists of several files, right? Packaging them together won't affect each other. So this is one of our... The third overall feature of our virtual machine packaging. With the concept of packaging, it means that later on, whether you want to uh, back up this virtual machine or whatever, or after you have set up one, right, after setting up one on a server, if you want to install it on other servers, using this method of packaging, copying and pasting, is generally more efficient than installing it again. Ah, the efficiency can be higher especially when you have a large number of installations. If you have many to install, you can first set up one, then copy the contents of this one virtual machine, and then you can transfer it to other places or directly copy and paste it to other locations. In this way overall, it will be more convenient if you need to install virtual machines on multiple physical servers, all with the same virtual machine, right? Installing 14 times would actually be a bit too time consuming. It's better to just install once, and then after you have installed it once, package these installed virtual machines package their files, and then transfer them. On other servers, it can be used directly. And this is one of the benefits of encapsulation, which is the third feature. The fourth feature is relative independence from hardware. Ah, compared to hardware, it is relatively independent. Because our virtual machine runs on the virtualization layer, it can only see the virtual hardware provided by the virtualization layer. This virtual hardware also doesn't need to consider the physical breathing situation. So the virtual machine can be on any. x86 servers, such as IBM, Dell, HP, etc. Like running our... These, these... Virtual machines. These servers can run directly. Ah, in this way, it actually breaks the constraints between the operating system and the hardware, as well as between the applications and the operating system, meaning there won't be a significant impact and compatibility will be relatively better. Uh, including now there are actually many of these. Many of these virtualization software can actually be compatible with many different versions. At the same time, compatible with many different system versions. And some hardware architecture versions. Relatively speaking, it is actually more user friendly and relatively independent of hardware. Ah, compared to hardware, it is independent. Meaning your hardware will not affect some of the architectural platform features within your virtual machine. This is one of our Several basic features of virtualization, partitioning, isolation, encapsulation, and relative independence from hardware. This is one of our basic features. Moving forward, we actually use these features of informatization to utilize its specific virtualization functions. If anyone wants to learn about Huawei Cognitive Technology or obtain the Huawei Certification Question Bank, 
please send a private message, or you can leave a comment below the video for technical exchange. That's all for today, everyone. Bye-bye.